Welcome to GovCast. I am your host, Managing Editor Amy Kluber. The Small Business Innovation Research Development Center at the National Cancer Institute is the agency's engine of innovation, as it calls it. It's where small businesses from around the country work to develop and commercialize technologies in the prevention, diagnosis, and treatment of various cancers. Performing this work from NASA to now the NIH is Michael Weingarten, director of the department. He manages all aspects of NCI's small business programs, including a portfolio of $135 million in grants and contracts every year. The technology that goes into managing all that data is vast, as we'll hear. Michael, thank you for joining us on GovCast. It's great to have you. Thank you. Thank you for having us. What brought you to the National Cancer Institute? Well, you know, I've actually been at the National Cancer Institute for about 14 years now. It's hard to believe it's been that long. Before I worked at NCI, I actually worked at NASA, and I was in charge of partnership development for NASA's technology transfer programs. And basically, my job there was to figure out dual uses for space technology, how you could reuse those technologies for industries here, here on Earth. And got to do some pretty cool things when I was there. Started our first marketing programs around NASA technology and was fairly successful in getting a lot of good partnerships going with the private sector. And at the time, the deputy director of the NCI got to see some of my work, and she had a strong interest in making some changes to improve the SBR program at the National Cancer Institute. So she hired me and brought me on board. And now you're here. Yeah. What were some of those technologies that you were working on at NASA? Well, so it's really interesting. NASA funds technologies pretty much across all areas. Medical-related technologies were one area that came out of NASA's human space program, but also a range of sensor technologies. For example, the very first GPS-related technology and the software for GPS actually came out of NASA technology. A lot of people don't know that. So a lot of really interesting innovations, lighter materials that are in cars today, just as an example. You direct the Small Business Innovation Research Development Center within the NCI. So what is that center's role in regards to NCI? Congress actually set the um, Small Business Innovation Research Program up back in 1982. And the whole mission of SBIR is to fund small businesses to engage in technology development and develop new innovations that match each agency's mission. So at the NCI, our job is to fund small companies that are developing the next generation of technologies for preventing cancer, for detecting cancer as early as possible, and for treating cancer. So it's a very broad portfolio of technologies that we fund, probably about 400 to 450 projects this year. Actually, our, our budget is about just over $170 million. So we get to see some really exciting applications that come into our program, and we're always trying to fund kind of disruptive technology that's going to really make a difference in people's lives and, and improve their care as patients. Can you go into more about what some of those projects are that the center funds? Yes. Yeah, so we have different stages of funding. We're actually one of the first sources of funding that a small business, a new startup that has just gotten going, will look towards because funding is really hard for a small business to come by. But they can apply to the NCI for funding, and we'll fund projects from the very earliest stages of drug development, developing a new drug can actually take 10 to 15 years to all the way from getting something from the lab out to patients. It can actually cost over $2 billion to develop a new drug. So it's a very costly endeavor. And SBIR can really help jumpstart the technology, advance it to a point that hopefully other private investors will, will jump in and keep funding the development of the technology. One good example of that is a company that we, we actually started funding back in 2005, a company called Molecular Insight. And they have actually, just last year, the FDA approved a new cancer treatment for uh, rare tumors, rare cancers of the adrenal glands. And before this new drug was developed, patients really didn't have very many options 
the drug is called Azedra, and SBR really played a key role in moving that to the point that then private sector kind of stepped in and kept the development ongoing. That's just one example. Happy to talk about others. Within the center's priorities, how do the decisions with funding certain businesses fall into those priorities, such as, you know, there's many different types of cancers. So how do you make those decisions? So one of the really important things about the way the NIH chooses the projects that it funds is that everything, all applications go through the NIH peer review process. And what that means is that for every area of technology development, there's a panel of experts who are scientific experts around a given field. A pool and panel of those experts are pulled together to review all applications that come in. And they score, they rank, they identify the strengths, the weaknesses of the applications. And ultimately, that score and their assessment of the technology that's being proposed comes to us at the NCI in, in my program, and we then continue the discussion based on their review, and then we make recommendations for funding coming out of that. So it, it's supposed to be very objective, scientific-based, also looking at the commercialization strength and strategy of the companies that apply to us, because that's one of the key things that makes the SBIR program different from other parts of the NIH is that we're not just trying to fund the best science that's out there and trying to fund the development of new cures. We're also thinking about, does this company that's applying, do they have the right kind of team to advance that technology, move it out of the lab, advance it to commercialization, and ultimately get something that can help patients? Wow. So what are some of your priorities specifically at the center? So one of the things that we've been able to do is we're the only institute at the NIH that has actually set up a center that's whole job is just managing this program, the SBR program. So we actually have 20 people who spend all their time just working with small businesses. And because of that, that allows us to not just come up with funding, for these companies. But these are small businesses. Most of the companies that we fund are five people or fewer when they first come in. And they don't have the resources that, say, a academic institution would have that might be working on, on a new drug. So small businesses need all kind of help to move their technology forward. So we weave in a whole lot of additional resources for those companies. We provide application assistance for companies that have never gotten an NIH award before, they can apply for what we call our application assistance program. Well, they'll get a coach and a mentor that'll help them when they're writing their application. Once we select a company for funding and they're in the program, we offer another program that we call i -Core. It stands for Innovation Core. And that program actually provides entrepreneurship training for small businesses that we're funding. So a lot of times we have these outstanding scientists that apply for funding for our program, but they don't have any sort of a business background. And what that i program does is it, it teaches them how to build a business around the technology that they're developing and really what the best market that they should be targeting for that technology. For example, you know, are there certain cancers that don't currently have a treatment that they should be targeting that new drug or that new device towards. It really helps them figure out what direction they need to go in and really a development path for moving that technology out of the lab and towards the marketplace. That's another example of a program we run. We also have a uh, program we call our Investor Initiatives Program, where we spend a lot of time developing relationships with private investors, with venture capital investors, with large pharmaceutical companies and device companies so that as our companies are maturing the development of their technology, we can provide introductions for our small businesses to these other larger companies who are looking to bring in new technologies so they can try to move them to the product stage. And if you look at where new drugs come from, large majority of them actually originated in a small business and then were ultimately picked up by a larger company to move it towards patients. So what is the importance of a small business? What value do they bring to some of these efforts? 
Well, small businesses are willing to take risks a lot of time. A lot of times, larger companies, at least at the earliest stages, are going to be a little bit more risk averse. So they're risk takers. They also are willing to look at new ways of doing things that they bring innovation to the research of cancer. Again, if you look at where a lot of the new products for detecting cancer earliest and then treating cancer, a lot of those products come from the small business community and and from all these innovators, oftentimes that may have started out at a university, they come up with this great new idea, they spin it out into a small company, and then they advance it step by step to get it to the point where they've de-risked the technology enough that then other other people will provide some funding. And the SBR program really plays a key role in providing funding that they otherwise would not have been able to get to move that, that technology forward. We just did an economic impact study where we looked at the impact of the SBR program in terms of its impact on the economy, but also its impact in developing new products. And we found some really interesting things that I'd be happy to talk about. What were some of the biggest takeaways from that study? So what we did was we went back to companies that we funded from the late 90s to 2010, just under 700 projects that we funded in that time frame. And then we were able to track down each of those companies that received those awards and ask them you know, a whole set of questions about how far had they gotten in terms of the development of that technology. What we found was about 250 of those products had actually been commercialized out of 690 projects that we originally funded. And then we asked them, well, what kind of sales, what kind of revenues were you able to generate from commercializing your product? We found that those companies were able to generate over $9 billion in sales. That has a direct impact on the economy. But we asked the bigger question, what was the kind of the return on investment from that $9 billion in sales that these companies were able to generate? What we found that was that SBAR was able to have over $26 billion in economic impact on the economy as a whole because we were able to take the risk in investing in some of these early stage technologies and advancing them when others probably wouldn't have done that. And in turn, the return back to the government, those companies paid about $3 billion in taxes back to the government. We only invested just under $800 million in those all those different projects. So the government's actually getting a return on its investment directly from the taxes those companies help generate. So it's not just, I mean, of course, there's the benefits with public health, but then it, there's also that economic side that people might not think about when it comes to health. Absolutely. And, and that's one of the goals of the program. Obviously, the first goal, we're at the NIH. Our mission is patient health. So that's the thing that we care about the most. But another key goal of the SBR program is to impact the economy. And the $26 billion in impact, also 100,000 jobs were created from all those different products that were sold. So certainly a program that leaders would want to keep around. (laughs) And they tend to be very supportive. Congress tends to be very supportive of this program. Great. Were you always personally interested in health? That's a Very good question. I think I started becoming really interested in health when I was at NASA, and I saw some of the technologies that NASA was helping develop and the spinoffs from NASA technology. So that got me really interested. When I was looking for a a change in career at that point, I think the National Cancer Institute really offered a, a wonderful opportunity to kind of move forward on that. And then what about on the other side of the coin, public service? It takes a specialized interest to want to work in public service. Uh, it's easy to be attracted in the private sector. We hear all about that, but working government is a bit different. Do you think working in the small business side of things maybe can relate a little bit to the private sector? I think that's actually one of the things that makes this job really cool is that we sit at the intersection of government, industry, and academia, and we get to see some really interesting and transformative types of projects that when people apply to the program, we really get to see cutting edge new technology and we get to act on it. But it's funding the best science, but also funding things that you can see they're they're not just going to be in the lab. The goal of this program is to move them out of the lab and try to advance them to the point where they can actually get out to patients. So that's one of the things that's made it 
I think, a really fun program. And for me personally, in a week, I will uh, be at my 30 years of service in the government. So wow. yeah, I never thought when I first got my job back in, uh, in 1989, my first job, at first I started at the State Department and then on to NASA, but never thought I'd be doing this for my whole career. But it's, uh, you know, it's been very fulfilling overall, just seeing how you can help people through programs like this. Wow. So going back to a little bit of the funding process, can you go into how a small business would come to work at the National Cancer Institute and maybe describe a little bit what those phases are and how many phases there are? Sure. So there are three phases of funding that we we offer and companies apply to us. We have what we call funding opportunity announcements. Most people apply for this one funding an announcement that comes out usually in January every year, and then we have three different receipt dates across the year. We have, I mentioned the three different funding phases. For the earliest stage of technology development that we will fund, companies can apply for up to $400,000 for a very early stage project. We call that a phase one SBIR. If that project is successful, and they've got some really promising data from the project, then they will come back for the next phase of funding. We call it a phase two. They can apply for a phase two for a, up to $2 million in additional funds. Typically, that phase two project will be about a two-year project overall. If that project is progressing and has kind of taken the next step, then they can apply for a, a new program that we actually created at the NCI about 10 years ago. We call it our Bridge Award program, where they can apply for an additional $4 million in funding. And the whole goal of the Bridge Award program is to help bridge companies that are still at these fairly early stages and to fund them into human clinical trials so they can actually test their, their new drug, their new device, their new diagnostic out on people, and they can get the data that they need to get uh, approval from the Food and Drug Administration. One of the really interesting things about our Bridge Award program is we have a requirement that they raise matching funds from the private sector when they apply to us. So they can apply for up to $4 million from us, but they have to also raise $4 million from the private sector. And that makes sure for us that the private sector has skin in the game and that they're, you know, they're committed to the project. And that really helps a lot in transitioning these companies and advancing them to the point where they have enough in the way of funding and they can advance their technology to a key inflection point that they can then move it towards commercialization. So I think probably the biggest challenge with a small business is funding, of course. So this is where that would be important to the future of a, a small business. But what are some of the other challenges that they face that might attract them to come work with the NCI? So if you look at the development of a new drug, on average, 10 to 15 years from when it, they first start developing it. And a, a lot of different steps that you have to take that drug through in order to get it improved. And in fact, 90% of drugs actually fail when they get into clinical trials. So there are a lot of challenges that a small business faces. They need access to regulatory experts that can advise them on a regulatory strategy so that when they are trying to get approval to go into clinical trials, they know what they need to do specifically. So we provide that type of access to regulatory experts that they otherwise couldn't get. We also provide access to kind of mentors where they can access other companies or people who are experts in the field. They know, hey, in order to move this drug, this device forward, What's the development path? What are the steps that I need to go through in order to make sure that I'm giving the, the best chance for this drug to be successful? We provide access to that type of expertise. Those are just some examples. And then I mentioned our investor initiatives program. Capital is the most important thing. We can attract great technology, but they have to be able to access capital. SBR funding can only take them so far. They have to be able to access private capital. So we help we help them open those kinds of doors. And then would you say that's similar along lines of why they would apply the SBIR route versus another pathway option? 
Yeah, well, so SBR offers certain advantages to a small business that they don't get when they go for private funding. SBR is what's called non-dilutive funding. We don't take an equity position in the company. They get funded through a grant or through a contract. If they go for private sector funds, typically they're going to have to give up part of their company in terms of part of the ownership of their company in order for that private investor to invest in the company. So that, that's one advantage. The other advantage is they get to keep the intellect, whatever intellectual property they create under an SBIR. They own that. They control it. They also typically, if they're raising private funds, there might be some sort of joint ownership or there might be a requirement to license that technology to the private party that invested in the small business. So the whole goal of this program is to provide a program that gives the company, the small business, the best chance to be successful. And the way it's structured, I think, really helps do that. Can you go into more detail about some of the specific projects that receive funding? You mentioned drug development. What are some of the other types that you see coming through? Yes. Yeah, so if you look at our portfolio, about 40% of the projects we fund are drug development related, but other areas are really also important. Cancer imaging is a really important technology area. Cancer imaging technologies are key to detecting cancer as early as possible and also for monitoring the progress of treatment for a patient. So these are like CAT scans, MRI-related technologies, et cetera. We fund devices for treating cancer, like radiation therapy-related technologies and surgical devices also. That's an important part of the portfolio. We fund diagnostics. These are typically molecular tests for detecting cancer as early as possible. We fund research tools to really help the research community so they can understand cancer better. And by understanding cancer better, that can help hopefully in the longer term lead to new treatments. And then digital health related technologies are, are also important. And just one example of a company that we're funding right now in the digital health arena is a company called De Las Mias. De Las Mias is a health awareness portal that's really targeted at Latina women. And the whole goal around the portal is to help women maintain healthy lifestyles in order to prevent cancers. So as an example, providing information on recipes, you know, what should they be eating? What kinds of exercises should they be doing on a daily basis? You know, and it's a very sticky type app, you know, that hopefully people will use on a daily basis and go to, look for information, create a community where Latina women can communicate, talk to each other, and really help promote healthy lifestyles. That's a good example of a project that we funded. So where else do you see the future of cancer research, especially in relation to the small business program? Well, one of the exciting things about this program is, you know, a lot of times people come to you with ideas that you weren't able to project ahead of time. And so we're trying to get the best, the most innovative, the most forward-thinking kinds of projects from the companies that we apply to. And we can't always think of what the next step is going to be, but I can give you a couple of examples of things that we're, we're just starting to fund that look exciting. One is a company called Shade that's developing this new UV sensor where you would actually wear it like a watch. And when you go out in the sun, it'll tell you when you're getting too much exposure to the sun's rays to help you prevent skin cancer in the future. So, you know, we, we all go to the beach, wear sunscreen. It'd be really nice to actually have something that would tell you when it's time to, to go back inside. That's just another example. But we're always looking for new ideas. Another hot area that's really moving forward in the field is the whole area of liquid biopsies. So if you could just take someone's blood and by doing an analysis of the proteins in someone's blood, you can get some sort of sense if they have any cancer risk as opposed to having to go for a real biopsy. That's another real promising area that we're, we're seeing. We're always trying to look for the next generation of technology, and it's hard to predict where those innovations are, are going to come. But we're always thinking, what's the next thing where the NCI can invest in an area that others want it in order to move it forward, de-risk it to the point that hopefully other investors will come in to move that technology forward for patients. Where does emerging technology play 
such as artificial intelligence or machine learning, especially in things like imaging, we hear that that's becoming kind of a big part of AI in general. So what else do you see that playing a part? So that's a, a really great question. So one of the things that we do with our program is when we see emerging technology areas and we want to encourage the small business community to apply in those areas, we can come out with a targeted funding announcement just on that area. And AI and machine learning is, is an example of where we've actually done that. So we have a, um, a funding announcement that's actually available right now where we're looking for companies to apply on how they would use AI to analyze a range of different images, for example, CT scans, x-rays, et cetera, to look for patterns across. One of the things you can do in AI is you can look across thousands of different images from patients, and you can look for patterns in those images that are going to be indicators that someone might be developing a specific type of cancer. And by doing that, by getting that type of data, our, our hope is in the future, we'll be able to detect that cancer a lot earlier in the process so that you can treat it at a much sooner time. The sooner that you can treat that patient who might be developing that cancer, the better prognosis for that patient overall. And you can, can also potentially even prevent some cancers too. So that's just one of the ways that we're looking at, at AI right now for uh, how it can help patients in the long term. And then what about for you? You have mentioned you will soon come across your 30-year anniversary in public service. What is next for you? One of the fun things about my job is I've got a great team that I work with, and we're always as together as a team. It's a young team also. We're always thinking about what's the next thing that we can do that will be helpful to our companies and that will help them take the next step. Just last week, you know, we were talking about this together and we're putting up a, uh, a new ideas board so that, you know, whenever anyone comes up with a, a new idea that we can capture it and, and try to move on it. And that's one of the, the nice things. we got a team of 20 people, but it's pretty small and pretty agile. And so we can develop new programs that are going to be helpful to our company. So just as an example, one thing that we're looking at right now is when we first start funding a company, you asked, you know, what are some of the things that a company needs in addition to the funding? We're starting to plan a program right now where when we first start funding a company, they would actually go through a full needs assessment that will look at all the different gaps in their scientific planning or their commercialization planning, their regulatory planning, et cetera, and try to identify kind of a scorecard, okay, for each area, this is where you currently are, and this is where you need to go. And that will help lay down a path for them to follow from the earliest stages so that they can be more productive as they progress. Well, Michael, thank you for joining us. And I was very fascinated to hear more about the small business program, especially at NCI and such a important public health topic with cancer research. So I really appreciate the conversation. Oh, thank you for inviting us. Appreciate the opportunity to sit down with you, talk about our program and go Nats. <laughs> GovCast is a production of Government CIO Media and Research. For more podcasts, head to governmentcio.com slash podcasts. GovCast is produced by Amy Kluber. It is edited by Resonate Recordings. Theme music provided by Big Hoax. If you're interested in sponsoring a podcast, contact us at sponsor at governmentcio.com.